Here we go. Hello and welcome to the next session in our live events at the International uh, Women in Business Expo Summit. We have Helen Mack telling us or sh sharing with us about activating the optimism advantage to create best possible results, whether that's in our life or in our business, it usually overlaps. So Helen, please take it away. Thank you very much, Sigrid. It's a, it's a joy to be sharing this, knowing not only am I potentially um, talking to some people really, I mean, I know there are people in the room live, but also that you've decided to share all of our content um, in the expo and in, on your YouTube channel. So um, it's like the spread is continuing, which is fantastic. And I guess the, the thing for me is I describe myself as an optimism evangelist. And that's because I have a passion for the fact that I think we need a shift in our mindset or a shift in it. we need to shift our mind um, to get better results and I've been exploring this area for decades and I have not found a better way to approach challenges in both business and in life and as you say how in, they are so interconnected than making a shift to your mindset so I work on my, my surname is my business surname is Mac M-A-C and a little while ago someone said well what does that stand for in your business and I went oh what an interesting question so in all of the work that I do now I use the MAC method, which is three elements. So the M is for mindset, the A is for activities, and the C is for consistency. So whether I'm coaching a small business owner or working with a team, the MAC method is, is how I operate. So today we're going to be focusing on the mostly on the M, on the mindset. And if you'd like to know more about the A, which is focused a bit more on the business world, then pop into the uh, video that, that I recorded yesterday as part of this expo or come and visit my booth and we can chat about, about the how I help business owners in their activities. So the M is for mindset and it's really about exploring how can we change the way that we look at the world so that we can get a better outcome in whatever we're doing. So I want to share with, I'm going to share a few slides um, in the, in the in middle part of this, because I think it helps to um, have us have some visuals. It helps the visual learners. So um, I want to talk about why this is a business accelerator. Why do we want to activate the optimism advantage? And it's because um, we really need to think about being conscious about the choices that we make. So I think that we have basically been sold the wrong spectrum. I don't know if any of you out there feel like this. There's this big push to be positive. And if you're not leaping out of bed feeling fabulously positive every day, there must be something wrong with you. And so, you know, if you Google be positive, like there's like um, billions of comments and things on Google all about how to be positive. And I think it's putting pressure on people when we don't need any more than we've already got. It's putting pressure on people. Oh, my God, there's something wrong with me. I can't be positive under all these different pressures that we're dealing with. This is the spectrum that we've been sold. So we all have negative days. We have bad days. I'm a professional optimist and I have bad days. So if I'm going to have some bad days, sure as hell you are. It's just one of the things of being human. And we've been having some lovely conversations about the importance of recognising that we are human um, in, this, in this room in the last couple of days. So we all have bad days. It, it, the thing is that we've been sold that what the first step, we, the next thing we need to do is we need to stay calm. Be neutral. Don't panic. It's all going to be okay as long as we think positive. Yeah, no. Nah. It doesn't matter how much this guy thinks positively, he is not not going to get wet. Not going to happen. Nothing, nothing in that setup, no matter how much he thinks positively, is going to get him wet. And this is the thing about the positive thinking um, um, school of thought, huh, is that you can't think yourself into a better state. And you also can't think yourself into better outcomes. You, I'm sorry to disappoint you all, but you cannot sit at home on your lounge visualizing the red Ferrari and it's going to come down the driveway. You have to do something. And that's one of the differences with the model that I talk about and teach, which is that we really need to get away from positive thinking because of the negative impact of positive thinking. 
we feel like we have to think positive and that means that we feel bad when we don't. Thinking doesn't solve anything. It needs a different level. We need to change the approach and make a different choice. I believe that there is a power opposite of negative and the spectrum of that power opposite looks a little like this. We all have bad days. Yes, things happen. Things happen in life. Things happen in business. Um, I Like everybody who's listening, I have had moments in my life where I have thought, okay, how do we get out of this one? How do we recover from this scenario? And the challenge is that we need to recognize that and go, okay, I'm having a bad day. If When I'm having a bad day as a professional optimist, <laughs> I have to recognize that too and take some time out and just kind of recalibrate what's really going on. The difference with the optimist, optimism spectrum is that you. the first step is that you have a realistic check. You go, okay, where are we now? Where do I want to be? What are the things that I have around me, the resources, the people, the support, the, the opportunities, the what's what are the things that are around me that are going to help me get where I want to go? But it needs to be realistic, not woo-woo, I'm going to just think myself into a, a better universe, a realistic check. And I work through a whole bunch of checks when I'm working with people. And then we choose to make a different, to, to look for the best. So the thing about optimism as a, as a spectrum is that we need to change our thinking towards possibility. That is, what is the best possible outcome? Now, the word optimism comes from optimus, which is the Latin um, for the search for good or the search for the best possible. And so even in the word there is a built-in action imperative. The first three letters are opt, which is to choose. So if you move yourself into the mode of choosing and you search for the best possible outcome, then you will get better than you would have if you just sat in your sad sack and waited for the red Ferrari to come down the driveway. It's all about searching for the best possible outcome. Now, the good news is that there are some very simple things that you can do to improve your um, hit rate on being able to shift into that optimistic mindset. And I just want to share those with you today. The first is to create clarity. Now, when I'm doing um, a more detailed analysis of this with people, I talk about the difference between glass clarity and diamond clarity. So if you think about a diamond, it, it has a power in that a single ray of light going through a diamond scatters into a beautiful rainbow of colors and if you can get that crystal clear about your goals then the opportunities will arrive in front of you like a rainbow like a, 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 a sp splash of color but I have actually have a slightly different version of the world around goal setting because I think that goal setting can set us up for a challenge and that is that sometimes, and, and maybe it's just me, but sometimes when I write down the goal in details and I've, I've been taught the smart method and all of that sort of stuff, if I write it down in too much detail, it feels like my brain goes, oh, we're done, good. And then I forget kind of to do the actions that need to be taken. So I think we need to focus on goal getting and more action oriented you know, setting is for jelly and custard and those sorts of things. Setting put, um, solidifies things. Goal getting puts us back into action. The three things we need to look at, we need to look at what is the reality. It's very tempting to set goals, stretch goals, and then you feel like you're going to bust if you try to get them. We need goals that take us outside our comfort zone, but not to the point where we're feeling like we're breaking. And I think the pressure that a lot of people are under at the moment, that's how we're all feeling. Oh, my God, I've got all these things to do. Let's make sure that we are clear about our reality. And then let's do a realistic assessment of our resources. How resourced are you at the moment? A lot of my clients are feeling that they are out, they're tapped, they have nothing left. They really need to set to um, create some goal getting around doing less or doing some self-care. We're going to, we've got some lovely content about that coming up in, in all the videos that are going to be on the YouTube eventually. Um, so what are your resources, including the people around you? Who are the people who lift you up? 
And are there some people in your world that maybe need to be given an invitation to depart? So what are the resources that are going to help you? And then third is responsibility. Are you actually responsible for making this happen? Is uh, How much responsibility are you willing to take to make this happen? I think particularly as women, we have a bit of a tendency to take responsibility for everything. And one of the things I'm learning on my personal journey is to say, yes, I understand that that is important to this scenario or to you. I currently can't support or assist you in that. I'm happy to be your cheerleader, but I can't do it with you or for you. Taking responsibility for me, for my health, my well-being, my business, my life, my family is the ultimate responsibility that I am focused on. So goal getting will help you get clearer. You'll get that diamond clarity. Number two is to uh, maximize momentum. So I'm going to use an example that is probably going to make me sound old, but I remember having to push start cars. You remember when manual cars <laughs> broke down and you had to push start them? For those of you who are too young to imagine that, just go and watch an old movie or something. The thing is that to get into momentum, sometimes it's, it requires a real push. But once you get started, you can change direction. But we need to get started. So the focus is on maximising momentum. And the, the um, key message here is that we just need to, sometimes we just need to get make a start, just take the first step. And my motto in this direction, in this section rather, is any direction is better than none. Because once you take action, the universe will give you feedback and say, that was a good thing to do, do more of that. Or you're not so sure about that, maybe we need to change direction. But because you're in momentum, because you're in movement, you can change direction. It's much easier to move, to change direction when you're in motion. Movement when, you are in, when you're stationary is really, really hard. And then the third piece is maintain your mindset. And there's no prizes for guessing which mindset I recommend that you maintain. There is, I have developed nine principles to activate the optimism advantage. And you can see that on the screen. Um, it's a, a little mini poster that is in um, a, a micro book, a micro ebook that I'm going to be offering uh, to you as part of your attendance at the expo. And you can see that there are things there like we seek opportunities. So we're constantly looking for what is the opportunity that's in front of us. Um, we choose a sphere, which is to do with making sure that you. we talk about you know, balancing and, and keeping all the balls in the air. Well, I think that's a dangerous uh, um, uh, metaphor if, you're, if some of those balls are really precious. Your health, your family, your relationships. We juggle these balls and if one of them drops and it's something precious, it's very hard to uh, repair. So we need to make sure that we choose the thing that we want to focus on, maybe set the others carefully aside where we can watch them. Don't try to juggle too many things. And one of the other ones that I'm going to focus on now is that we also uh, need to, number nine, is to do stuff. I love this image. You can't get juice from an orange by just looking at it. You have to do something. And the subtext here is create positive pressure. So good pressure is a good thing. Um, no pressure at all, no stress at all is actually the definition of being dead. So we do need some pressure, some stressors in our life, but we need to balance them out so that we've got positive pressure, pressure that is moving us towards what we want to explore, what we want to do. And the thing about the juice image is that if you want to have a little bit of juice in your life, um, you need a, you can use a hand, uh, a hand juicer like this one, but if you want to really crank it up, you're going to need some better resources. So take action in your world and um, decide, do you want to just do a little push, a little squeeze, get a little bit of something? And that's completely great if that's the goal that you want to get. If you want to really crank it up, then how about getting the equivalent of the um, massive blender that has all of the, the I, I love going to those shops where they put the orange in the top and it all automatically you know, goes through all these machines and comes out the bottom. That might be the kind of resource that you need. So uh, here's two things that I would recommend that you contemplate doing. The first is 
take home the optimism advantage. So that uh, that um, QR code will help you get access to this book, which includes a bit more of a sell for the case for optimism, if I haven't managed to convince you so far. Um, you get a, a full detailed version of the optimism manifesto, an opportunity to assess yourself, and you get a copy of that poster that I showed you that you can stick on the wall to remind you. And if that's not your thing, then come and visit the Small, idea, small Business Ideas Exchange booth. Um, one of the things that we do in the Small Business Ideas Exchange is help you maintain your mindset by doing things like celebrating success and keeping people accountable. It's a great way to connect with like-minded business owners and um, find out how you can get more from your business and your life. So that's really what I have um, to cover off on today. And I think I'm doing well in terms of timing. So um, the, I guess my final piece is that it, this is like any other habit. You actually need to practice it. Like anything that we change in our life, you, it's not going to happen overnight. I, I, there's, there's an ad in Australia where um, it was, a, I think, a, toothpaste, a toothbrush or something. It won't happen overnight, but it will happen. Um, it's very much about making sure that you take action regularly don't beat yourself up if it doesn't happen instantly just reset recalibrate and go again i know that optimism is the um, advantage mindset it can deliver better results and i wish you an abundance of them as you implement all of the ideas from this fabulous expo Thanks, thank you Fred. Thank you so much, Helen. That was very interesting. Lots of things to discuss now that we have uh, heard your take on optimism, your way, the MAC way.